What's up, rock stars? Today is a great day because today I get to finally show you Primal The Awakening. I know you guys have been waiting for it and I can't wait to show you what's inside this box. I don't know yet either. It's still all taped. It's very fragile, very fragile. Let's dive in. All right, now as I struggle to unbox this like I do all boxes that I receive, uh, because I am a professional, I would just like to remind you guys that I would love to thank my patrons and YouTube members. It is through their financial support that much of this channel is possible because I do not take any money from any game developer so that when I, you hear my opinion, you know it's my opinion and not my wallet's opinion. And I think that's something really, really great. So. If you're able to and willing, and uh, if I've helped you out maybe with a purchase or anything like that, and you wanna kind of maybe pay back a little bit, uh, there is a link down below to my patron, but of course that is not required. All right, I think I have this open. Let's see what's inside. I'm excited. Styrofoam and bubble wrap. Yay, in the inside of the box, who knew? Oh, guys, it looks like they did a good job. What is all this? This is interesting. This is like, <laughs> what did they stuff this in? I see what I love about this is a prototype by the way so I mean I, that's obvious but there you go um what I love about prototypes is they package them all so differently so here I have some digital printing media paper rolled up on the sides to fill up that's great um and my personal favorite I've had ever was I got one in a poker set box like a tin box that was awesome but uh these are always so fun just to see this see what they use <laughs> obviously when you uh back this and receive it you won't get it like this so this is one of a kind for me i guess that's fun just uh slowly taking it out because i i don't if there is something on the side i don't want to like break it if they shoved anything in there i think we are clear okay all right let's see let's go ahead and oh this is actually fairly light it's not that heavy at all oh man there's more Ooh, there's more okay well, let's go ahead and take this out oh look at that okay all right two boxes that is a uh, very uncommon thing for a prototype two whole boxes wow okay we got that or stuff shifting around so I'm trying to be careful with this one I think that's probably the minis do we have anything else we have a lot more what do they use this for they use a lot of this I wonder what this is for. What are you printed on this? You need to let me know. If I find out, I'll tell you in the comments. How about that? So take a look down there. See if I found out what that's from. Okay, let's go ahead and get these boxes on the side. I'll clean this up. We'll meet right back here. All right, let's see here. So we have this box. This box is going to be later, though. Let's shove that to the side. I think there's minis in there. This, I think, is probably most of the game. So let's go ahead and take a look here. Maybe I'm completely wrong. I don't know, but I hear some stuff moving around in there. Hope I didn't break anything in my carelessness, my excitement. Um, if so, I have glue. Heck, I even got a 3D printer. We can make it happen. Don't worry, there's nothing stopping me. Except maybe me. Alright, so now, let's see if I can just slide this out instead of unwrapping it for like an hour here. Maybe. Maybe not. Alright. Well... Let's go ahead. I think it's just one tape here. Okay. So I've had some just tape continually, but this I think ended up okay. All right. Almost there. <laughs> Another wrap. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Whew. There we are. Miniatures. I was wrong. Look at that. <laughs> Push that to the side. <laughs> Joke's on you. You guys know I'll show you guys all the miniatures up close and in detail. I'll talk about them. I'll critique them. You'll get all my um, way too in-depth rating on plastic crack and we'll just kind of go from there. Um, that means this is the game. It's going to make sense. It's the bigger part, right? This and look at that. Love the art. 
Um, looking good. Okay, so right off the bat, now again, this is a prototype, but I love looking at these prototypes because um, one of the best things about this is you guys get to see where they're at with everything. Not just necessarily game development wise, wise right? That, that'll come a lot in the, in the kind of early review here, uh, which I will obviously do. Um, but you can kind of see, like, I don't know, it's your first impression, right? And first impressions are important. And sometimes it's just like paper clips and post-it notes literally have had that before. And sometimes it's, it's pretty much a finished product. And so there's everything in between. Now I'm gonna gently tip this over and just take a look at the back. The back is completely white. I'm not gonna bother showing you that. Um, that right here, not a finished product, not intended for sale. <laughs> Stop me, who wants to buy this? No, I'm kidding, it's mine. Um, <laughs> all right, come on. So we can see right here, there's actually some tape on here. I think it's way too white for you guys right now, uh, but there's a little bit of tape there. So let's go ahead and see about, it's not taped in, it's just hard to open. Which really just means that once I open it, I should just never close it again. And it is taped, I don't know. I'm I'm looking, guys. Struggle's real, come on. It's just these corners with the tape there. Very hard. Aha, maybe it was just a little stuck. There we go, there we go. Da da da. Oh man, looking cool, looking cool. Okay, let's see what we got here. We got the forge where you get to make Flame Tongue and Ash Bringer and Burning Stone, Volcano, Red Dragon Helm, Red Scale Armor, uh, Voilto, whatever, the Gauntlet, and a Lava Buckler. And then you can see this is all just level one, or the Fire Forge is level one, where you can build this stuff. And then you need Bones and Blood and Zima, probably some kind of plant maybe or something, obviously some wrapping, who knows, Scales, and it looks like that's it. Now on the back, we have the exact same thing. Yes, so then we have the alchemist level one. So that's where we craft our gear. Here's where we craft our potions. Potions are very important. Uh, they allow you to do all sorts of stuff. We have Alamore and Impetum and Evoke and Vidya and Hatrox and Erden. And then you can also just heal up to two wound cards by using some of this stuff here. Otherwise you need, again, just different stuff that you can kind of loot all the different uh, crafting materials and whatnot. These are the player cards by the looks of them. And right now they're, um, it's funny, um, I was gonna say these are just like these flimsy things, but really I've had finished games that have this. Now I don't know if this is gonna slot in with an overlay, if this is gonna be uh, double-sided or, or what. All right, so here we have what, one, two, probably four, one, two, three, and four characters. We have, now I don't, I'm sure there's probably gonna be more, but again, the weapon is really your class, right? Uh, you have big shielded guy here, sword and shield. Oh, this even says, okay, so when you play sword and shield, you're him. This is kind of interesting. Great sword, you're him. So you can't be him with a hammer. That's by this, what I'm hearing. Great bow, you're her. That makes sense because of the miniature needs, right? and hammer your him. So if they are more weapons, there's gonna be more heroes. That's what I'm seeing there. So that's already something kind of interesting that, um, you know, they have it imprinted here. Obviously it's on their miniature. So this guy is really this weapon, <laughs> if that makes sense. Like he has a name and all that and he looks interesting, but he is the hammer guy. And then it says a little bit um, about kind of what each one is by the looks of it. it has some great art on the back. Um, the fact that the prototype is already double printed like this is great. Very cool. You can always pause it and read it if you really want to. But uh, it, again, it even says his name, but really you're talking about the great sword or the bow or, you know, whatever. Which is kind of interesting. Uh, you have your potion slots here. Your um, th These three kind of act together and you can kind of make a set through this, right? So you have your weapon. In this case, it's literally <laughs> like... Looks like a, it shows a shield, but it's a sword and shield. Um, then the helmet and then the armor slot and those three combine. Then you have this here and then of course your three slots there. Looks like it's not really super upgradable. Uh, I'm not gonna even try to pronounce a lot of these, <laughs> but that is super cool. Those look great. You can tell the uh, design is kind of all the way through, which is also nice. Okay, next we have 
in the prototype, what we're fighting. We have Toramat, who uh, it looks like this is per player. So if it's two players, level one it has 30 health. If it's uh, level two, it has 30 health. And then level three, it has 45. If you're playing with four players, the level one has 50, and then 50, and then 75. And it looks like that ratio continues here. So for him, uh, I don't know if his cards upgrade or what, but his health doesn't upgrade between one and two, no matter how many players. And then on three, it finally does get an upgrade. Um, another interesting thing is here it upgrades by 15, here it's upgrading by 20, and then there it's also upgrading by 25, which is, uh, again, like a big jumps there. Kind of interesting. And I imagine it's because uh, hero strength gets compounded, right? So as you get stronger, you just get more and more uh, strategy probably available to you as well. And we got the three decks here and then here and then a lot of art here. There's a little bit of wasted, you know, white space here, right? Like you don't need necessarily stuff here. Maybe you can put some tokens or something there, but uh, these could be shrunken down. I'll let you guys know when I play it what the table space looks like. And then on the back, you get just really nice art. I love the... um the brush stroke kind of uh, digital art that they have here. It's it's quite nice. In fact, I want to say this is probably the same size it is. So these are the exact same size, which is kind of nice. And notice here, again, a lot of space here. Now maybe you put tokens or cards or something there, but there's a lot of space on these. Let me not get too disorganized. Then we also have the Varaxin. Uh, liquid fire flows through Varaxin's veins. It is the blood of the Volatar, father of all dragons. Whoa. Uh, that makes it a lot less, a lot less health. Even at four people, level three, it's only 45 health. So this guy is like a tank, right? This guy is tanky. And then this person, obviously, is probably a lot more damage. You just got to survive him and burst him down. He only has 18 at a two player. And then again, the amazing art. I love the silhouette effect that they do here. It kind of reminds me of a Guild Wars 2 kind of vibe. If you've played that uh, that game, it kind of reminds me of that. Then, oh, all the cards and tokens. We're going to move this to the side a little bit and show the board. Look how small it is. I dig that. I mean, this is, I don't think, <laughs> I'm a little bit more forgiving of the, uh, uh, the the big cards here because this isn't going to take much space at all. Okay, so as I showed you guys early on, Boss goes here, and then you have these sections here that you're moving around from. Um, from what I can see, it looks kind of like a Twisted Fables kind of thing, where you you know you can move and then moving, you can move maybe two or something like that. Um, you'll be holding aggro and doing all that kind of stuff. The art on the back, I think, is um, uh, abstract enough to fit something like a fire guy or a plant guy or something like that, right? Because you got a little bit of color here and some there, but then you sort of have all this kind of uh, just stone and whatnot. Even, maybe even some water here by the looks of it. Um, maybe even up here as well. So looks looks good there. And then this, this looks super uh, stylized here. Obviously a turn tracker here, and that's it. So that means all the, the gameplay is in the cards and the crafting. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at some of these cards. Okay, and tokens, and cards. All these are nice and wrapped, They're not even in baggies or anything like that. And just to make sure, because uh, Townsfolk Tussle did this to me, there's nothing under there. Good! <laughs> Alright, so there's that. Let's go ahead and put this box away. And dive into this. Okay, all right, so next, let's go ahead and take a look at the tokens real quick so I can get this baggie out of the way, and then we'll just look at cards and then miniatures. That's exciting. Okay, there we go, every last one. Um, not actually a terrible amount of tokens. Uh, this is maybe a, a two trays. It depends on the size of the trays, obviously, but. Um, they uh, they actually feel quite quite nice. They're very very light. Um, it's just some kind of light wood. Like it almost feels like like it's hollow or something. Like it's very light, like a wafer. Um, so it looks like we got sand. My assumption here, maybe uh, the, maybe one of them can like bury underground or something, and that's what this represents. We got some rocks. This is different terrain that you would put on the. Uh, the board itself, and maybe these, these go there too, some uh, larger kind of cliff-like rocks. Um, in each section, it'll be kind of set up different. You can hide behind these and stuff like that. Here's some plants. I bet you can loot this for crafting. So if you go there and spend an action to do that, instead of attacking, maybe you can get that. 
We got some fire. I can only imagine how this is going to be used. It has red and orange. I don't know if it's a level one, level two kind of heat index thing or what's going on there, but we have one for each zone. So I imagine that this is a either the zone's on fire or it's not. Let me see how many rocks we got. We got more for the four rocks. So you can have multiple rocks in one. So we got more of that. We got one plant. Uh, here's another plant again, probably something that you can uh, can uh, loot uh, for crafting material. Uh, another one is the same kind. It is not their difference. So three kinds of plants. And I think the rest are just really cool looking tokens. So we got an X, uh, two different sides there. You can see again, it's, it's, this is early. So there's not even like quite centered where that one is kind of thing. Especially in two sided ones that happens a lot. So see this one fairly centered, that one a little off. It just happens on the, the second pass through. However it works, I'm not exactly sure. I just, I've seen it happen a lot. We have these little tiny tokens here. Uh, looks like just maybe like an armor break or a shield break or something like that. I bet is what that is. Um, we have this, which obviously marks something. Maybe that's aggro, I don't know. We have some kind of time delay stuff. You can probably put on a card to delay it a little bit. Uh, some damage, they're all uh, two-sided, one and five, which is kind of nice. We have some plus ones. I don't know if you can buff a minus one, uh, buff and debuff token here, at least one. I bet this is, I wonder if this is aggro, because it looks like it's a target thing, but it's interesting that there's more than one. Maybe you can have more than one aggro, I'm not sure. Um, I don't recognize this offhand. We got some sweat or some tears. <laughs> They're probably sweat. Reminds me of like the, the stamina from Descent. And then a crossed out eye. <laughs> um, it looks like that's a, just about it. Maybe a, a minus one to your card draw, some more debuff kind of stuff here. We do have tens and fifties, which is kind of crazy, but that way you're not having a whole bunch of tokens. So it looks like it'll be actually fairly light on the tokens overall. Um, but yeah, I mean, these are actually quite nice. Like they don't have any tags or anything. They were like cut out. Uh, it looks like, like actually from a machine, which is pretty cool. Okay. For now, for now, I'm just going to do this. There you go. We're not going to waste time picking that up. That's dumb. Okay. Let's get the big cards first because they're pretty. All right opens up fairly nice, which is good. Even if like the final one was like that, that's actually kind of nice. I dig that, it was easy. I didn't have to fight it or anything. Okay, so on the back, you have the type it is. So it looks like you probably start out with this, right? So you start with your great sword level one, right? It tells you how many of each deck you get and then kind of a special here and then uh, the number here as well for damage. Then you get the flame tongue level one. And then you can also make maybe the Shimmer Blade level one. And as you can see, they get different amounts in each one. This one is universal across. This one is sometimes more in others. And they also have an element. And elements will attack enemies in different ways. And so um, maybe some enemies are, are uh, resistant to the flame, in which case you want to do something like a Shimmer Blade or even a Greatsword, perhaps. Whereas if, you know, maybe it's weak to fire, in which case you want to use a flame tongue. So you can kind of do different stuff like that, which is kind of cool. So it looks like we're going to have two crafting options per that I get to play around with and tell you guys about. We'll just look, look through those real quick. we got the Great Bow, the Ashbringer, and the Abyss. Ah, that's a cool looking one. Look at that one. And you have the Hammer and the Burning Stone. And that's it. So the Hammer only gets one by the looks of it. And then Sword and Shield. And then the volcano, that's ridiculous. And then the horn wall, I like this one a lot. Um, so, and look, that's universal, but it's fives instead of sixes, which means you're gonna go through your deck quicker. Okay, so that's the uh, weapons. Uh, let's go ahead and look at, maybe, the, let's just do all the armor. Uh, okay, it looks like it's all mixed up here. Okay, so, there we go, make that. And there were, the art style of this is great, by the way. I really, really dig this. Um, like it just looks nice. Uh, maybe the, maybe there's a, again, there's a little bit of space here. Maybe the helmet could be blown up more, but it's probably to scale to the armor. Yeah, so it's not quite, well, okay. No, actually the helmet's as big as the chest. So it's just a universal size of the image. Like this could be a little bit bigger is all I was saying there. Okay, so what's interesting is your health 
is a combination of what you're wearing, right? And so if you have a basic helmet and a basic armor, that's five, six, seven, eight. You got eight health, congratulations. And then your damage is three. And there you go, it's that simple. I love it, that's awesome. Of course, there's more to it with cards and stuff like that, but um, it, it, I thought it was kind of interesting that it's based off of what you wear. Um, it's kind of a, a nice uh, streamlining mechanic, I think, there. So you're, uh, you know, it, and it, it changes dynamically. So a uh, uh, lighter armor just means less health, right? Okay, uh, so you got, it looks like we're all going to start with some basic helms, which is fine, all four of us. And did I put this sideways? Did I mess this up? Did they mess this up? Can I blame them? All right. I'm going to keep this all in one. Okay, so now, red dragon helm, right? So now we have some like resistances and you may recycle one when you start. It has a little bit more health and it's strong to two and weak to two. And you'll see that universally. So you're going to want to have different sets of armor. And then of course, as you combine them, like if you combine that with the armor that also does that, well, then you actually double up on that and get more resistance. So you can be partially resistant. You can have a, a set that is resistant to everything a little bit or some things a lot. You can see the Bone Helm here. It gets a look at the topmost card in your deck. If that card costs two plus stamina, add it to your hand. Otherwise, you can choose to discard it or put it on the top of your deck. So again, you get these kind of abilities here. And that might be a, a, a theme here where you're looking at stuff uh, across the board. So it might be in the armor as well. Let's go and take a look real quick. Um... Probably this rebound plate is what it is. So let's look at the... Oh, there it is. Back bone, black bone armor. You may accumulate two stamina token instead of one. At the end of your turn, if you have two plus cards in your hand, take one extra stamina token. And look at that, seven. Wow. And the starting one is five. So two extra there. Again, plus the pluses and minuses. So that's kind of how those work. Now you get like traps you can lay down. Here's a... Uh, Kind of a bear trap looking thing. Uh, place one counter in this card. When the monster turns to your sector, you may discard a counter in this card to deal three uh, bone damage uh, for each like level in your discard pile, whatever that is. So if you start using whatever that is, um, then you're going to just do a lot of damage on your traps. So you can kind of spec into that maybe. Got some uh, gauntlets here. So it's more armor, but notice it doesn't add any health or weaknesses or anything like that. Um, uh, there's a lava buckler you can have. Okay, here's some extra stuff. Here's a spear. So you can have a crystal spear. Um, that's kind of interesting because it's not a weapon, right? So the spear's not a weapon, which means you can, you can use it differently. Very interesting. And then you have your potions, which also do all sorts of different stuff, whether it's just draw extra cards or ignore the stamina cost of the first card you play this round or, you know, just d different stuff like that, depending on kind of what you want to spec yourself out with. Okay, there's that. Now I think we have, here's the four weapons. Here's another batch of cards and another batch of cards. So let's go ahead and look at, um, I, I think this, let's go ahead and, and do random. Let's do that. We'll do the weapon stuff at the end because I want to kind of do them in order real quick. I'm not going to look at every single card and like read them all and all that stuff, but I'll look at a few in this and a few in this and just to get a feel for maybe how different they are, right? Because if, if that's your classes, if that's really the big changes that you're doing besides your gear loadout as well, which is kind of how you can further customize it so that um, if I'm playing the great sword guy, but I'm specced different than the other person that has the great sword, well then, you know, we're different. So that's still kind of cool. Um, or if I played Greatsword twice, I could spec differently. Okay, so we got all sorts of stuff here. I think these are some enemy cards. So let's see what's going on here. Um, yeah, I can see there's the Ryvern there. Okay, so let's see what's going on. So we got, this is obviously separate. Make a crash, what is this? Okay, I'll have to read what that is, obviously. Uh, three, two, and one. So this is maybe the different levels of him. And Tormat, Tormat. Tor okay, yeah, so interesting. Okay, so let's look here. So here's Tormat. Remember, he's like the big kind of beefy guy with a lot of health. Um, when revealed, Tormat gains one armor token. And it looks like maybe he threatens two and does two damage or something like that. And then here's the level two version of that. Uh, he gains two struggle tokens to so shuffle, charge, and smash behavior cards in the behavior deck. So suddenly he gains more stuff. Oh, these are the stages. Okay, so I'm, I'm getting this. So um, after that, then he uh, gains some more stuff. And then three, he also gains an acceleration token and he earthquakes. Okay, 
So then we also have different stuff here. So level one, tough skin. If uh, he has four plus struggle tokens, he gains an armor token. And level two, it says he gains one additional struggle token when uh, he escalates. And when a player moves, he gains one struggle token. He's furious, so he can be have tough skin, he can be furious, or he can be indomitable. And indomitable, while Torment has eight plus struggle tokens, he adds one fancy symbol there to all action cards that you reveal. And then he can also have this Make It Crash, which is some kind of special card here that uh, has some blind rage and who knows what's going on there. So definitely some AIs there I need to read about in the rule book. It's been a while since I've really looked at this. Uh, and I'm assuming this is the other guy. Yes. Yeah, so let's go and stop pre there. Take a look at some of these. So they got, you know, different numbers here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Though he has two, two fours, a five, a three, an eight, a nine, uh, one, a six, a seven, a two, and two twos. Interesting. Okay. Tail swipe. Uh, these all level one, looks like, at least this one thing here. Uh, deal two damage to all players in the rear sector. If there are no players, in other words, wherever he's facing, is his opposite is the rear. Uh, if no players are in the rear sector, all players in the flank sector suffer one damage. Target player may discard uh, whatever card from their hand to destroy a rock terrain in their sector to avoid that damage. So you get to pick whether or not you block on behind that. It doesn't just happen. Target players can avoid damage only by destroying a rock terrain in their sector. So I'm assuming that means there's no other way to avoid this. Zoom in a little bit so you guys can really see it. There you go. All right, and uh, it looks like on the back they have different symbols as well. Uh, here's a, a tail swipe and then a heavy swipe. Let's see what the difference is there. Bonus damage plus two is really the only difference there that I'm seeing. Then you have a skull bash. Uh, this one, deal one bone damage to all players in the front center. Again, you can be strong or weak against that. Targeted players may discard a card from their hand or destroy a rock terrain to avoid the damage. Tormai gains an acceleration token if it already has an acceleration against three struggle tokens instead. Rage. Tormai, Tormai immediately turns to the player with the most uh, probably aggro in the hand and deals three damage uh, to that player. The player may discard one from their hand or may destroy a rock terrain to avoid that damage. If make a crash objective card is in play, activate blind rage. That's a special card that we saw. And then, of course, you know, Disrupt Horn Attack. Uh, what's Disrupt? All players in the rear sector card, discard one from their hand. So he can just make you discard stuff. So you're having to deal with us. Here's another Blind Rage he can get. Um, just some various stuff there. Smash, Charge. Um, immediately turns to the active player and deals three damage to all players in the front sector. If there are any rock terrains in that sector, please avoid damage immediately. Move without paying any cinema costs or destroy one rock in the front sector and discard all counters from Make It Crash Objective card. Torment suffers five damage for each counter discarded this way. Very interesting. So you can like almost charge into the rocks and get hurt by the sounds of it. Okay, so that's him. All I want to do with uh, Ryvern is look at maybe just a few and then these kind of augments. So uh let's see we got a okay this is interesting so here's the one so the one says when a player plays a uh, aggro card attacking from the rear sector place a counter in this card reaction once there are two counters on let's hit the tail which is this the objective card is complete and braxton suffers five damage so extra damage if you attack his tail pro tip um and then on the back here i think it says the same thing yes it does okay so no difference there uh, probably the same here. Okay, so two, when a behavior card for, with a firestorm trait is triggered, immediately place a fire terrain on the front sector. This one says, when a player moves, discard the topmost card from the behavior deck. If that card has a claw trait, that player suffers one damage. So he can just swipe you while you move. So it'll be kind of hard to move around, maybe to his tail. At the end of each round, place one fire terrain on each threatened sector. So on that one, oh, that's that uh, red um, stuff that I, I saw. Oh, here's another one. Here we go. <laughs> I just didn't get it. Uh, when you trigger behavior cards, uh, players in the front set to reveal a card in their hand and suffer or suffer one damage. So there you go. Here's kind of the threat sector. Everything. <laughs> Place one fire trait on each threatened sector. Just fire everywhere. That's level three. Uh, here's a level two, a little bit less, and a level one, a little bit less. So he's, he's uh, spitting fire and pooping out some fire. That's what's happening there. Real quick, take a look at just a few of these, less than that one. Oh, 
Let's look at wing attack. If the player, if the active player is in a flank sector and they have no uh, in their sequence, they suffer one damage. Also, he's going to attack you with his wings on the sides. Tail whipping players in the rear sector suffer three damage unless they have that in their hand. If hit the tail judge card is complete, the card has no effect, and Varaxon suffers five damage instead. So, in other words, you can actually nullify this, where his tail is now chopped off and he can't hurt you. To avoid damage, players must discard that. Okay, assault. Claw, see there was that claw keyword. Players in the front sector immediately move or they suffer one damage. Raxon turns to the player with the least amount of that in hand. The requested movement must be paid with a whatever card instead. So there's that as well. Um, and then ad additionally, if you recall, uh, movement can be uh, kind of suffered as well. Another claw, quick aggression. After player suffers one damage unless they have that in their sequence. And then they have a bonus damage plus one on that. And flamethrower, dragon wrath, regeneration. Firestorm, there's a Firestorm keyword. Each player in the rear sector discards a blue card from their hand. If they do not, he recovers three health. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, quick aggression and frightful growl. Interesting. Very cool. So obviously the not only the uh, cards and kind of the AI changes a little bit, um, but the area around it changes too. So the first guy had all these rocks and then uh, that you could discard. And this one, he cared more about what you had in a deck, right? So if you had a... Um, you know, either stuff in your hand or in, in play. That's what mattered here. It uh, looks like here's two ob objectives. I'm just going to read the top of them. Threat from the Abyss and Quakes at the Red Spears. These are two quests. These are probably what I'm going to be doing. It shows you who I'm going to be fighting. Shows you kind of their ability thing there, which is very convenient. And then maybe a little bit about each one. So I'll have to look at that. Uh, then we have Shield Mask. Okay, these are the um, kind of special ones. Multiple attacks. So you start out, I believe, on this side. And then you flip it to that side, I believe, is what it does. Maybe it's the other way around. Not exactly sure. But either way, you, you can kind of upgrade this. And there's one for, you know, it looks like two for each. No, maybe just two for him, three for him, one for her, two for her, and one for him. Which isn't even four people, so that's kind of interesting. Okay, and there's that. Get some small cards here. Come on. This is what I get for... I'm, I'm not even trying to use a knife at this point. <laughs> there we go. There we go. I win. Okay, it looks like we got a whole bunch of whatever that junk is. We got some blood. <laughs> we got some bones. Got some, what's on this side? Am I... Is it just the same thing? Yes. Okay. So you got some uh, fire elemental kind of stuff here. Uh, discard this card to gain two scales, a resource card, interesting. A wild maul, so this is just the the uh, different ingredients you can have. Bethanus, Zima, and sometimes it'll actually, not all of them, but some of them actually give you a little bit of lore, which is nice to see, and it introduces you into the world a little bit more, which I appreciate, because uh, that, that lives in your head as you're playing the game, if that makes sense. And even some blood, you can get some blood, and then these right here. Okay, all right. Let's do this all at once. Oh, I think I stabbed a card. I'm sorry. I feel so bad. I'm a terrible person. All right. You get like kind of a rainbow effect there. That's exciting. Is that a feature? <laughs> okay, there's them. Get off me. Okay, there's that rainbow effect as well. That's just on the wrapper. Am I, am I going crazy here? Where did I start? Start it here. Because it just seems like in the middle of it too, not even across the whole top. Oh no, look at that. Oh, oh that's why, because those are different colors, of course. I was like, what in the world? Why is it just in the middle? <laughs> Going crazy. Where did I where did I start these? I don't even know. Gosh dang, I don't want to have to do this again, alright. There we go. Oh, I'm excited to look at those miniatures. It's gonna be so good. And I'm I can't remember. I don't I don't remember if they gave me a rule book like a PDF or if it's somewhere else. <laughs> I'll need a rule book too. Okay. Alright. Okay. okay, so here's your blue, your red, 
your yellowish, that's an odd yellow, it looks green to me, like or like a yellow green. Uh, your green, another red, another yellow. <laughs> I don't know why they're back there, maybe slot them in or, or who knows what, lacerate, love it. And then some wound cards as well that you can have, uh, specifically for the weapon you have, which is interesting. So it looks like different wounds act differently depending on who you are as well. Now I went over a, a big details video on these cards. I'll go and link that below. You can take a look at it. So I'm not going to talk too in depth about like how you use this symbol or this symbol. I'm just going to read them and just reading them it will be enough for the purposes of what I'm trying to show here. I actually showed some combos that you can do in that details video though. The coordinated assault, choose an ally or to discard a blue card in order to deal two damage and replace one behavior card in play. So that's very nice. You can work together a little bit. Uh, quick thrust, when you discard quick thrust from your hand, inflict your, da your weapon damage to the monster, which is very cool that you just get to, pff, there you go, damaged. Thwart, reaction, when an ally removes a certain number of struggle tokens, you may discard thwart from your hand and remove extra struggle equal to that amount, then the active player draws one card. So again, working as a team, not only can you double essentially what they're doing, but then you actually get them another card as well. Or maybe just pressing strike, you get slash, and then a draw two. Now, where is this? See, here's another slash, time slash. If you are in the flying sector, you may immediately play a red for free. Okay, let's go ahead and look at these red cards. Jumping slice assist. If you paid with a blue, right, so it has a cost, and if you pay for it, you deal two additional damage if you did it with a blue. Uh, deal four additional damage instead if whatever that is, I forget. Um, so you can, again, pay for it. Essentially, you're paying with these and then using them. So you have to judge which one is, is going to be which. Here's a double slash. Deal three additional damage uh, if you do an extra one there. Or double your damage there. Stun the monster and inflict vulnerable. The dragon strike. Uh, outpace. Deal one damage equal to the number of uh, blue in your discard pile. And then I want to say... That even one of these... Maybe not. Maybe not. Uh, okay, reactive guard here. So these are kind of your defense ones. So these are kind of your teamwork meta ones, your attack ones, and then your uh, kind of defensive cards here. Deflect, search your deck for a card with the slash trait and add it to your hand. So you can actively not only deflect, but then you come back and you're like, oh, I need one with slash. Well, okay, I could grab pressing strike real quick. So you could do that, do that, and play that, and draw two. Right, Or maybe you did this one and instead you're actually going to go ahead and do some damage. You have some choices based off of what you're trying to get uh, into your hand. But you get to draw it directly into your hand. Reactive Guard, you get to deal two additional damage with that sucker. Um, you get a few of those. And Taunt, at the end of your turn, choose an ally to draw one for each of those in your sequence. Um, which is great, again, for your, uh, your other people. Guard of the Dragon, reduce the cost of the red that you played this turn by one, so that's a good thing to have. Then you have dodge, essentially, which is the green one. Evasive step, search your deck for a red card and add it to your hand, which again is quite nice. Uh, swift, you can reduce the stamina cost of the next card you play by two. Um, retreat, where you just get to draw some more cards. Momentum, where if you use the blue, you get to draw a card. And then uh, there's some extra stuff there. So that's kind of how that one's working. You get those slash cards in there, that's kind of the key there, right? Looking at the hammer, um, it's going to say stuff like, look at this, deal four additional damage, right? But that's with two of the blues. And there's this assist keyword we're seeing now. Charge choose a player to draw a card. Uh, this is also very cool. This is they can stun the enemy with a concussion. Um, kind of expensive, but that's all right. Bludgeon, which is another assist. You may take a strain token to remove two additional struggle tokens. So, uh, again, you're, you're really getting a strain from this, but... Uh, rapid Blow. When a behavior card is triggered, you may discard Rapid Blow from your hand in order to cancel its effect. Very nice. Heavy Smash. Remove one struggle token or remove three tokens instead. Sledgehammer. Rampage. Must be played after a uh, blue card. Deal additional damage. Uh, deal two times additional damage instead with that. Uh, knockout. Another Rampage. A stun and Confuse. So this is definitely going to do some debuffs, which is kind of cool. Uh, frontal assault, choose a player to draw one. If they're, if you're in the front sector, they draw two instead. So you want to be in there smacking his head, which is kind of cool. Iron Blast, Rampage, deal two additional damage. Opening, inflict vulnerable, so you can vulnerable them beforehand. 
Uh, okay, looking at the yellow iron stance, draw one. If you paid with a blue, draw two instead. They definitely want to be paying with a blue. That's two for that now. Uh, endeavor, uh, we got impetus, lateral slip, uh, draw one, thrusting. We discard thrusting from your hand to take a strain token. Uh, leverage draw cards equal to the number of struggle tokens on the monster with a limit of five. Battle cry. If you have a strain token, immediately generate three, and you can spend it to play the next card in your sequence. Very nice. Oh, some debuffs there that maybe I wasn't I wasn't expecting. It makes sense to stun and confuse and stuff like that. Um, and our shot. You get a, a recycle one, volley two. Here's a cult shot with an aim. Next time you play a red this turn, deal one damage. Uh, got a few of those. Accurate shot, which gives you an assist. Uh, same with the quick shot here. That one gives you a volley one. Okay, white opportunity. Uh, aim, stealth. To play white opportunity, choose an ally to discard a card from their hand. <laughs> uh, so they kind of have to give you an opening there. Long shot, inflict a blind. It deals seven additional damage. Dang! That's a lot. Uh, inflict blind, aim shot gains stealth. Which is interesting. Uh, if, if you're aiming. Uh, heavy shot. You may deal. You may pay three extra stamina for heavy shot to deal five additional damage. Wow, this is definitely the the uh, a damage dealing thing here. That's insane. And also, you can do blind as as well. Uh, some more draw cards. When you discard Fighting Edge from your hand, draw one card. You get a, a quick assist. All these assists that you get to do. Repositioning, recycle one. The next card you get. Play this turn against stealth. A backflip, you can play backflip only after a red attack. The next time you refill your hand, draw one additional card. Acrobatics, uh, if you with a blue, draw three, you may immediately move one. Weak spot, aim, inflict a vulnerable, remove two struggle tokens. So you can also do that vulnerable. That's the second time I saw that. Definitely want to work together by the looks of it. Almost done with these cards. Next is minis. We got some more assists here with surround. This is the uh, shield and sword tempo. Remove one struggle token. Push was opening draw two. Bul bulwark. When an ally is suffering damage, if you are in the front sector, you may discard bulwark from your hand to cancel that damage. Just take the brunt of it. Counterattack. When you suffer damage, you may discard counterattack from your hand in order to deal three damage to the monster. So that's a good combo with some other stuff, I imagine. Here's some attacks. Deal damage equal to the number of aggro in your discard pile, I believe is what that means. Um, yeah, because see if sometimes stuff will give an aggro like this, and sometimes it won't. Beyond limits, you may suffer one damage. If you do, choose a player to draw one. Uh, remove two struggle tokens. Concentrated attack. Choose an ally to, and deal damage equal to the number of red in that ally's discard pile. If that attack completes the active stance, inflict vulnerable. Lots of stuff there. You can actually block stuff, which is great. Repulse, last breath, deal damage to the monster equal to the damage you cur you currently sustain. <laughs> uh, some draws with more assists, a lot of assists in here. Double the stamina generated by momentum when paying for a red. It lets you attack a little bit more. You do a feint. When you discard feint from your hand, draw a card. Uh, nice, untouchable. Untouchable counts as two for the attribution... Uh, attrition purposes. Again, I don't really know how to read that too well. Okay, so there's your four. There's a quick look at them. Probably looked at them maybe a little bit more, but it's kind of interesting to see all the different ones and the different keywords and statuses and whatnot. Next is minis. Let's take a look at the last little bit here. All right, miniatures it is. It is time. It's about time. Let's take a look. Now, it looks like they actually package this pretty darn well. Let's go ahead and I have a feeling these are the characters here. But, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take them all out first. I'll try to be gentle. Another one, these are our four characters. Oh, that's a big monster by the looks of it. And here is one of the monsters. Actually packed quite well. I have High hopes that this will come in good. It's in a box. That'd be even better. And then this one as well. Okay. And I think that's it. Yes. So. The heroes. Let's just go in order from right to left. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these. These and not myself, hopefully. All right. And 
Voila, let's see the first one, the reveal. Oh my goodness, look at him. He looks super cool. Wow. All right, let's zoom in a little bit more. I know you guys want to see this. Wow. He looks, look at that shield. He looks awesome. Minimal molding on the base. So that's definitely like it's like it's there, right? There's some stuff there, but fairly minimal. You still probably want to put a texture paint or something on there. If this is final, maybe we get some more sculpted bases later. I don't know. Um, the inside of the shield is textured. He is actually grabbing it. I can see his thumb kind of going there even, which is nice. Lots of spikes. Layers as well. Like it, you, this looks like it's layered on top of the rest. Um, a, a fairly flat pose here, which obviously this is a counter to that. Um, leveled uh, kind of armor, right, where again he has like these shoulder pads are layered on that shoulder pad, which is then layered on his kind of uh, cuirass here. The texture here on the uh, flap is really nice, a nice little touch there. I like how jagged it is as well. Um, I like how this is not super flat here because you are going to see that a little bit. Instead, there is actually texture there, which is nice. Or like folds and sculpt. Uh, banded arms here. I like it. That's a very cool... What I like about this is that he has this kind of out and up, like he's going to attack, but that shield is first and foremost. Additionally, it's a miniature where he's looking at you from the side. And he also flows off of his base. All of these add to just make it a, a pretty enjoyable... Um, miniature. This kind of half cape, by the way, again, is not seen very often. Is another nice touch, I feel. Um, definitely like him. Super cool. And, like, this looks like legit sharp. <laughs> okay, next one. Just trying to make sure break that nicely. There we go. Looks like they did a great job. Really letting this kind of be packaged well. All right, let's see here. And this one, we got the hammer guy. All right. Now, again, he is actually a little... Uh, I think he's slightly off the base here. Actually, that's probably... He might be perfectly level on the bait, like just cut there. <laughs> okay, so uh, this one, actually a little bit more, looks like there's some like <laughs> dust and stuff here, which is funny, I'll have to kind of blow these off. Um, this is using the sculpt of the base to give him a more interesting pose, which I do appreciate. That's always kind of nice. Not necessary. And the other guy had a pretty nice pose as well and wasn't like, there was no topography with his base, but this is nice to see. Different style of armor. This is a little bit more uh, chain mail. Uh, much larger shoulder pads though. Uh, the braids actually I think are a nice touch. I'm trying to see. He does have a mouth. That's very faint. Uh, these are definitely... Um, closer to true scale when it comes to the size of the hands and the heads. The texture on... Like the weapons are really the, 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 the star of the show here. Uh, this is a separate piece here, but it's actually put together quite well. I'm very happy with that, actually. Um, the eye here, this looks like a mouth. That is a... Like, once this is painted, you'd really see that. And it looks awesome. You can see, the, again, the eye and then the mouth as it opens up to this gigantic hammer. Having that cape come and attach itself to this long piece here is a very smart move. Without that, that this would have a tendency, even in ABS, to perhaps bend a little bit. Also, it is not attached to the base, but it could totally be attached to the base. In fact, I'd be fine with it being attached to the base. Um, to the point where I'll probably put a little bit of glue down and then, you know, shove it out of the way and then shove it in there just, just to give that a little bit of extra kind of uh, support because there's no real need for it to to need to move. Um, all of these characters have a lot of layers, right? You got the horn, and then you got this kind of like tabard stuff, and this padding here, and the chainmail under there, and that chainmail pad is on top of this kind of steel armor. Um, lots and lots of that kind of stuff. The uh, rope and stuff. I don't know if you can hear that. 
make sure you can. Has some great texture. Uh, and really there's texture everywhere here. Um, so again, prototype, mostly I can only talk about sculpt design, which is half the battle. The other half is to make sure that the production plastic can hold that sculpt detail in check. I'm not seeing anything that's too scary here. I will say that like stuff like this, these braids and stuff like that are very fine detail and small. I think they're big enough, like the braids, to actually survive. Chainmail perhaps are probably pretty good too, a little bit more shallow. Um, the detail of on this is fairly shallow. It just really depends, right? They will need a hard plastic at this scale with this detail level to really hold it. Um, but I'm not seeing anything like crazy or ridiculous either. It's certainly possible. I've seen miniatures with that. The um, miniatures from Hate, for instance, have that kind of fine chain detail uh, stuff. Though I think they might be at a slightly bigger scale. Next up, we have either bow or greatsword. Let's see. We're taking bets. Can't bet anymore. We're getting pretty close. Greatsword. All right. Take a look at this guy. Um, wow. This cape is like... It, I didn't realize this. I have to look at the art again. This is a wing. This dude's wearing a wing cape. That is crazy. <laughs> So again, in this version of it, it looks like there's some uh, like print issues here of some kind. There's even a little hair bonus. Get yeah. all right. Um, that being said, I never realized this is like a freaking dragon wing on his back. That's super cool. The uh, dragon he's using everywhere. So he's got his scales here. He's got his wing for a cape. He's got his freaking mouth, and through it is the sword. That is a great design there. That is very skinny. <laughs> Wow. Um, if this is not ABS in the final version, it'll need to be uh, thickened up a little bit, I feel. Or it's going to be super bendy, because mine's already pretty bendy. Um, that being said, love the dragon head and how it comes out of there. That's super cool. I like that a lot. Um, the eye sculpted there. His whole face is, he even has texture on his beard. Uh, here's some more kind of dragon stuff on the side. He's got another sword back here. Kind of interesting to give to the great sword guy. Uh, a lot of satchels, and again, that dragon skill armor is pretty much everywhere. Um, I have a feeling when painted, he's going to be the Red Ranger. <laughs> the shield, again, uh, kind of scaly and super cool. These little, uh, not anomalies, but the, the non-symmetrical look of it like this, I think, adds a lot to it in a good way. And again, slightly kind of crouched a little bit more on this side than that other side, which is also kind of nice to see. He looks super cool. These characters, by the way, are just looking awesome. They really are. I mean, if you just take a look at some of them, like, like they look great. Like, the design-wise is, like, super nice. Okay, last one. Any guesses on what this one is? <laughs> it's a joke. It's the bow. Then the two monsters, and we are done. Oh, monsters going to be good, especially that big one, right? That's, uh, that's what we're all about. Okay. They did a good job on packaging these so far. This has been been perfect. That's not always easy to do. Okay, I was like, maybe I spoke too soon. Nope, well, it looks like we're good here. And here is a gigantic bow. Um, obviously, in this world, they have giant weapons. I'm cool with that. I've always been a fan of like the Buster Sword and whatnot. Okay, uh, so interesting points here. She is holding the back of it. And you can kind of see... See how that bends a little bit? That's what I was talking about with the the, uh, the cape on this guy. Um, so if they could get anything, like if they could get this to actually kind of maybe flow almost just to, on, off from the other side or somehow attached to that, you would give that thing a little bit more support between here and here, and it might actually be able to work. I mean, you can kind of play around with it, of course. This will obviously be some kind of ABS, and it'll probably be thickened up a little bit, but I do appreciate how skinny it is here right now anyway. It's like actually it looks sharp. And then of course you got these big, what's what's nice about these spikes is you can use the bow as a weapon. I would imagine in her deck eventually you're, you're using the bow as a melee weapon. You could just kind of jab and stab somebody with it. The multi-layered and very billowy cape here uh, matches kind of her stance here. Like, like she just kind of stepped up on the rock 
and started pulling this back. And so this is flowing out the, uh, the opposite way. Again, we're using the terrain a little bit. It's what's nice is that it's not just a single rock. That's what we used to get. Now we got a little bit extra rocks kind of in different places there. Um, I mean, this is true scale. They make their hands so tiny. Now, looking at this, I'm trying to think of uh, how comparative they are. Let's say like this might just be a, a, a fairly skinny hand. Let's compare maybe her bigger hand here, which almost looks gloved too, but maybe not. Either way, do you see the difference in the size of their hands? So he he has this size hands. And she has that size hands. <laughs> That's a big difference. Let's try getting another guy. Let's try getting like this guy here and see. It's definitely closer. Um, so he might have some uh, gloves or gauntlets or something like that on. Um, this hand here and this hand here. Whoop, fairly comparable. I'm actually fine with that. I was just trying to check. Sometimes you see that happen. Especially when you swap to like the female. Like they'll make them really small. And it doesn't quite. Like they made everything small. And that doesn't match either. Um, it's like a few supports here, but the hair is a very nice texture. I like that. It's not your typical solid piece with just a slash, right? Instead, of, it, it has this kind of texture to it instead, which I actually quite like. It kind of gives a different feel to the hair as well. Love the sharp crinkles here, though. You can tell this is made of a different material um, just by how it folds, right? It's a little bit thicker material, I feel, um, which kind of matches, I think, how it's placed on the mini and stuff too so yeah very cool i dig it again these are quite tiny but oh my like the face all that sculpted looks pretty darn cool the inlay in the bow also super nice a nice little touch it's not just plain nothing in here is plain all right let's look at a look at a bad guy let's do that this is a different kind of bubble wrap just wanted to note that <laughs> It's a bag. Oh, I can feel him. Look at that guy. What a weird looking uh, enemy. Look at his mouth. Oh, I don't like it. It's weird. <laughs> he is cool. Wow. Definitely a unique one. Let me zoom out a little bit here. Make sure that you guys can see. Um, yeah, that is something else. Ah, oh, his little three fingered feet. I don't like it. Uh, the base is completely sculpted, which is quite nice. And it does have a front marker with these two lines here. Uh, Osorn used a little tiny triangle. They're using this kind of that. And I bet, I bet, let me actually get the board out here real quick. I bet that's the size. I bet that's like an exact match. Let's see. If we place them here, look at that. The lines instantly actually line up, which is quite nice. That means that it'll just fit right in, right? And you know not to place them like that or something like that, right? That is the front, exactly like that. And with how this board is, an arrow wouldn't quite have done it. I mean, it would work, right? But that actually really works. In fact, you could probably even paint those white and then it would actually match on the board fairly well, but you don't have to. You can blend those in as much as you want, I bet, as well. You know, make them stones or something like that. Um, the texture on him is great, solid. I mean, he is solid here. Uh, you can see kind of the resin that they did here. And then the um, little chipping here, that's pretty common. The assembly, you know, obviously has some uh, some spots here. This is not, by the way, when you look at multi-piece like here, obviously this is going to be multiple pieces but they won't necessarily split it the same way. When you get a prototype versus a steel mold, the steel mold's very specific in how plastic flows into it through the tubes and how the molds connect to each other on either side. And so you have to, um, and the real estate between them, and you can only position them so so much, you can't really do a whole lot in the Z axis. Um, so it wouldn't necessarily have these exact same splits, if that makes sense. That's all I'm trying to say there. That mouth, though, is really weird. It's still weirding me out a little bit. And the fact that he has, like, no eyes or these are his eyes or I don't know. Um, love the design. Um, I think the the uh, terrain works quite, quite well. Definitely kind of surrounds him a little bit. It gives him a nice frame, I feel. And again, he just looks super cool. I love how unique he is, though. That's my favorite part about it is just I've never seen a monster look like this. And I really appreciate that. Okay, let's do this. And then after I unbox or open this one, 
The only other thing I'm going to do is put a uh, the hero miniatures next to them, so you can kind of see a, a scale size difference, at least with these. I suspect this is not the largest miniature that they're going to offer, so... Um, but you can keep that in mind. But now you'll be able to see really, like, in in person, um, what they, uh, what they kind of can look like on, on a table, like, together. <laughs> okay, there's the bag. Hopefully this didn't break. Please be okay. If you're broken, you're not, it's not my fault. I think we're good. I think we're good. It helps that, again, at least with these enemies, they're not exactly, uh, skinny. <laughs> And there we are. Yes, I think we are good. And here's this guy. Look at his face. Look how thick his neck is. Wow. So you can see the mold line coming down here on this guy from the cast. Um, these wings, like <laughs> obviously a different scale here, right? But uh, same kind of design. Love this texture here. Uh, if this was hair, he'd be Super Saiyan 3. Uh, the spikes on the tail are cool. Again, you're going to want to kind of attack there. You can see the same kind of marker there for the front, just to make sure. Some, I mean, maybe it's not always as obvious where the head is per se, but that always makes sure that it is. Texture on the wings is quite nice. I like um, how deep these actually go. I've seen much shallower wings. This will actually take a wash and it'll look quite nice. Um, the wrinkles here. Do you see the wrinkles there? That's actually really nice. Um, like, I'm sure you can hear that too. That's great. Another thing I like about this, if it is split this way, is a lot of the times it'll be the body and then just the wing is a separate piece. And that's normally a fairly skinny part where it attaches to the body. By putting it around this actual shoulder, you give it some heft. So see right here, if it was just that, it'd be quite skinny. Um, which, you know, obviously this is. And a little kind of, you know, they should have pushed this down a little bit when gluing it in there, but that's all right. Um, but having the shoulder in there, I actually quite like. I think that makes them a bit more uh, ro robust. Um, I love the fact that the wings are not symmetrical. So this, this one's moved up a little bit more. This one's moved forward a little bit more. And of course, his whole body is twisted kind of like this. So his head is separate from the body. It's not moving at all in one. And the tail is completely to the side, which is interesting. Um, it's a longer tail, so obviously it saves space, which is, I guess, nice, but also just an interesting design choice. So uh, yeah, we're between this looking up, right, and then this to the side. Definitely kind of gives him a unique feel. Additionally, he's on this pedestal, uh, and then even then this is taller than this, and he's actually it looks like he's almost like leaning like he just stepped forward to like yell at somebody uh inside the mouth is textured that's always nice to see I always check that and the teeth look good uh he does have gums as well and the eyes also um sculpted which is great to see okay so let's go ahead and i'm going to set these on the board real quick that'll be our final shot shot and i'll talk to you guys in just a moment so let's go ahead and place them Hammer guy wants to be in front, right? Uh, let's see, what was it? Was it the bow person wanted to be in the flank? Do they even care? I don't know. Let's go ahead and have him in the back doing the damage and then shield guy there. So this is kind of how you would kind of go about things, I think, I feel. Um, obviously, you could then move around and you could have, you know, different rocks and tokens and, and whatnot and... Uh, you know, be trying to, you know, get the looting material here, but also trying to attack the tail. Meanwhile, trying to stay out of the fire. So obviously I can already see a few different things going around in these sectors, uh, which uh, again, is good. By the way, I never mentioned her quiver, but I love that it is on the side uh, and not on the back. Uh, I do appreciate that. And it's also a very cool design. So, all right, that is Primal the Awakening, the prototype that I have. I will be playing this. I'll let you guys know all about it. So be tuned uh, for that. If you have not subscribed with the bell notification, otherwise YouTube won't tell you when I uh, launch that review, be sure to do that if you're interested in the review. I will be doing a very detailed review to you guys all about it, all the ins and outs, pros and cons, um, good things, bad things, what I like, what I don't like what I think could improve, and obviously, again, all prototype. It'll be on Kickstarter later, and I'll, of course, I'll cover the Kickstarter too because 
these minis are super cool. All right, with that, thanks so much for watching, and I'll talk to you guys again really soon. Bye.